Hello, good morning, and welcome to Waddy Tales. Today, Monday the 8th of May, we start a Laser Blue Lotus Edge S on drop off. The owner and I were talking about track days and the Porsche GT Experience Day I had at Silverstone, and throwing me the keys to uh, take the Lotus for a little spin. That was an experience. The car is airborne. How cool does that look? Really cool little quirky thing. Good fun little car. Probably the smallest thing I actually have had in the unit here actually. It's almost, the Bentley was too big. The Bentley from last week was too big for the ramp. And this is borderline too small. Backwards and forwards with contacts on the owner and doing our own research online. If you're gonna lift an Exige or a Lotus, be very careful of the jacking points. You probably saw in the earlier footage of the jack location outside, the trolley jack location, it's sort of 60% of the way through the rear. Um, so there's a lot of overhanging rear weight. So using the factory jacking points, which are roughly there and there, you imagine 60% of the weight is at the back. They have been known to topple. So what I've had to do is take off the rear engine cover, the rear belly pan, and to locate better, more efficient, safer, uh, jacking points. So in the air now, we've got the wheels that are outside for their secondary cleanse. Really quite heavily pitted from heavy brake usage, so onto the wheels, paint inspection, and start some polishing. Uh, just seen the time, it is three minutes to six. I promised social media I would post the vlog for last week's Bentley at six o'clock, so I'll do that now. Uh, at work, second day, and I want to try and get through some of the questions that are coming through on the vlogs. Great reception, great response to the Bentley Brooklyn's video. Guys, thank you very much. And especially to those that have sort of joined the Patreon. I didn't cover that as well as I wanted to. It seemed a bit sort of forward. I didn't want it to be the case. Maybe I'll touch on it again, another point. So, one of the questions that I'm always asked, what compounds and polishes uh, do you use for corrections? For the most part, So for the most part, these are my three go-to compounds, Kosh Chemi, Menzerna, and Meguiar's 101. There's so much available out there on the market now, it's difficult to get sort of suckered into buying six of the same thing. Now these are sort of what I know, it's what I've stuck with for a short while now. If something groundbreaking started, I mean I've got plenty more. Uh, if something groundbreaking hit the industry, I'd perhaps feel obliged to switch and try, but I get on well 
there's a com there's different there's different varieties of when I'd use these and with what pads and on what paint and at what speed and at what approach. Just because I'm using these doesn't mean they're the best. It just means they're working for me, and it's from my experience that they're the compounds that I'm sort of sticking to. I know lots of other professional details will use similar. Some will use other things it's just there what tends to work for me so I sort of I guess what I'm saying is in this video and future videos just because I'm using Kosh KMHA and a Megawise microfiber pad typically there is a great combination and you will get some results but it might not be the perfect combination for the car you may be working on so you've always got to approach each car as its own uh, and start with the lowest combination and work your way up gradually until you find a balance point of hey this is where I want to be and this is the cut and the finish that I desire Another one of the questions coming in, uh, I can't put anything past you guys, just put everything. New headphones, uh, I was using these Sennheisers. They were non-noise cancelling, just I would play them at let's say 70% volume, which is enough to entertain me during the prolonged polishing sets and long days. Helped, to be honest, but Sony. These are Sony MDR-ZX 770s, noise cancelling. So to be honest, I don't know a great deal about this technology. We have a mic and digitally it listens to the ambient noise, decides what's good and what's bad, and keeps this sound pure and that sound filtered. It's extremely comfortable and when you're polishing, you barely know the polish is on. In fact, the, the vehicle dryer, the turbine, the blower, which would blow the vehicle down with, be it to eliminate water or the dust, first time I had these on, I didn't know the turbo, I didn't know the vehicle blower had been turned on when I first switched it on. I had to literally put it over my arm to check that it was working. Really cool. And obviously wireless, so there's no dangling cables. And you can actually switch between tracks on the headphone itself as well as the volume. Seriously impressed. It's a long story, but I've actually been gifted these, the headphones. The headphones have come to me as freebies. They were from a local company who they don't want to mention, it's a long story. But, I, yeah, extremely grateful, very, very impressed. If you're still using, if you're a hobbyist polisher or a detailer that's using normal headphones like I was, 150, 200 pound dollars, definite a worthwhile investment. I didn't know much about this technology and was sort of happy with where I was, but honestly, really really impressed surface area on this to cover but the surface area it has is quite curvaceous with lots of edges and lots of tricky bits to navigate to be mindful of to tape around to be cautious of it is a tricky one to navigate even sort of the flow under here the ducktail sort of thin here underneath the spoiler this itself getting the pad into there the underside of that the light clusters polishing these safely without catching the sides there's lots of taping involved uh, and lots of sort of small steps to make the end result a big step so it's 6 p.m and i've just got the car is going to be wiped down of alcohol now ipa to strip off any remaining residues and then a few touch-ups to be made i've sourced a b120 laser blue touch-up for areas like this on this side of the door the door corner there just where the paint's missing one here on the leading edge of the roof very small little areas it would just benefit from the smallest of application of paint via a toothpick uh, and speaking of toothpicks i've spent the last 20 minutes doing the tooth pickery the idea is wrap a toothpick in a microfiber 
and all these black dots and specks. This is grime and gunk that's been lifted from panel gaps in between the crevices, the edges, previous old polish residue from the edges and the rubbers around the window lights. There was a fair bit of it, I've photographed, uh, I've documented a fair bit of it, but it's just these areas that you need to get nice. Uh, and then we're going on to the paint protection tomorrow, along with the wheels. Exige wrapped up, protected, put back together, final tooth pickery, waiting on collection. I'm sure you'll agree, cracking car, uh, awesome colour, looks really well, very much uh, a worthwhile treatment on this car. And it's nice to see this, it's refreshing to see this sort of car, having these treatments because uh, it is a track toy. There's a balance of enjoying the car and the fun element of driving, but then also maintaining the appearance and uh, the future investment in having something like this done. Don't call. Husky, you're live in the vlog. You might you might see this in future episodes. Zero twenty seven. Zero twenty seven. Number twenty seven. Keep an eye out. Two stage minor pin correction again. The minor correction I try to sell. I try to push it to a level of defect removal. Sometimes we can win. With a single pass, sometimes we have to up it to two stages. So I know typically it's a two stage minor correction, but if that single pass isn't cut into where I want it to be, 70 to 80% defect removal off the car. I introduce a stronger combination or another pass, another hit. Two cutting sets with the refiner set to leave the car over exposed. But you're about to see the after footage and how nice it looks. Paint work topped with multi layer paint protection with the wheels having been off the car to be sealed inside and out as well as the glass. So moving on now. BMW Z1, I, I wasn't going to do a dedicated, devoted vlog for this, uh, but there's a lot of want for it already, lots of people saying, uh, please document, please vlog the Z1. I'll do a bit of before footage and during footage and after footage, but similar to the Lotus, I've got three days on the BM, do what I can, get some form of protection down. It's a, a show car, it attends lots of the shows. It's a very well looked after thing, but it's just picked up the swirls and the scratches. So it is just approaching 8 o'clock, Thursday morning, outside for the wet work. After you see the after footage on the Lotus. Music. Complete on the BMW. Before we go inside to deliver this third and final decontamination stage in the form of the clay bar, just using this moment to catch the sun. Here you can see the swirling, the abrasions, all this sort of stuff. The majority of this will lift easily, it's what's left beneath. I've got three days basically to do what I can to restore this. 
This 30 year old is not going to be perfect, but I'm sort of balancing the job between a minor and a major correction, which is going to be similar to the Lotus in that it may be more than a single stage cut before we go on to refining. In fact, looking at the formation of some of these, these are quite bad. out the spur bucket yeah I won't talk you through the process but if you've been here before you know what this is all about but you can see just how much this is collected since sort of October time I think it is and that's actually disgusting and it probably should have been emptied out a long long time ago for the doubters I'm not sure there are any doubters to be honest proof is in the pudding that this method is half decent and it stops the polishing dust Stops the polishing dust going uh, elsewhere. Hmm. Need a bag. Today we're going high to start the bumpers uh, and you can't really call them sills but the sides of the lower portion of the car because that is one big sill. Oh and by the way I'm sure you've realised by now that obviously the Z1 very quirky because it has I don't know what they're called but the door goes down sort of under into the belly of the car at the press of a button she comes up and at the press of the same button she drops. But whilst I've got you, I might as well run around the paintwork quickly. The car's had a bit of paintwork. I've seen the bonnet's been painted. It's one of the areas the owner's sort of not happy with, but appreciates the car, regardless of the time scales and the, the budget in mind, would never be perfect. So we have some bruises, some scars, some bad touch-ups on the edges. One or two of them, the owner's pointed out to me already. This rear bumper looks like it's been painted. If we get in close, tight clusters of sander marks, typically body shop induced. I mean, again, 30 years old. It's bound to have something weird there, a little black mark. All the swirls and scratches and the light clusters, these should come up nice. Light clusters very much benefit from having the same correction as paintwork, the brilliance, the gloss that's reinstalled to the plastics, the lenses. Uh, we're actually missing the filler cap, uh, long story. I've been advised I can't remove the side of beaters because they're silicon on, which is fair enough. Saves me battling, trying to remove them and causing myself a headache. Uh, it's quite high now, but the bonnet, as I say, is pretty flat and is one of the worst areas in the owner's eyes, which as we look across, yep, yeah, I'd pretty much agree. Uh, what was I about to show you? Oh yeah, oh, more touch-ups. That's a nasty one on the door. Uh, if you've ever seen the Z1, you'll know one of their sort of traits is on the door. Of course, when the door's down, it sits against uh, a channel, a rubber, and said rubber leaves a tide mark, unfortunately. This can be improved. This will be the second Z1 I've worked on. The red one's just the same. Uh, it can be improved, it can be lessened, but it's only going to come back and come back because every time the door goes down it's resting on something down here which is leaving abrasions. Cup of tea, couple of hobnobs and I'm gonna start on the rear bumper.
Asking tire dressing G T1. Just gonna have a sweep and a bit of a tidy up. The BM is about finished. I have to do give it an interior once over. It's not but for an interior job, but I always like to try and you know make it a bit nicer. I'll be back very shortly to do some talking. Detailer food, Philadelphia, and bagels. Just spotted a dent as well. I must try and book my uh, dent guy in as soon as possible. Okay, so just talking about a couple of, uh, well, touching on a couple of the latest YouTube comments, uh, which I do try to read them all. As you can hopefully appreciate, it's nearly impossible uh, to get back to you all. Well, it is impossible to get back to every single one of them, but every single comment is appreciated, good or bad. And then a couple of emails as well. I might even dive into sort of the Instagram messages because again, there's just a big pot of different media platforms scattered around Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, email, WhatsApp, text messages, voicemails. It's difficult to keep on track. <coughs> Excuse me. Philip Pearl Bears on YouTube. Uh, first of all, nice work. If you could only choose one, do you prefer this Gangrit D Match 2 or the Motor Match 2? Best regards from Germany. So I reviewed and talked about the Gangrit kit on vlog 25 i believe it was now on the daytona gray pearl audi r8 spider there will be a banner flash of any second that will take you to that one if you've not seen it already which do i prefer the d match or the motor match they both have their purpose is obviously the motor match is the portability the flexibility of having the uh, wireless battery maxes out to 2500 lumen so i typically use that one you see it's this one here on the floor for the low down areas and it can be put anywhere really that i wanted to go um, also when it's coupled with the When it's coupled with the tripod on the casters, it makes life easy, even easier. Great lamp, but at the same time, as is the D-Match. The D-Match matches out at 5,000 lumens, so this is the bright one up top. The D-Match I use for the long distance stuff. So if I'm on this side of the, if I'm on that side of the bonnet, and I want the light on this side shining down, so I've got a good angle, I can see what I'm working with. Uh, I'd use the D-Match for that purpose. You almost need to be at the 5,000 lumen output for the D-Match. You need to be back a bit, because otherwise it's too close, too glary, it's too bright, and actually 
doesn't do any good. Whereas put it further back, it's a less strain on your eyes, but you can actually you can actually pinpoint the defects more effectively. Um, if I just had to have the one, I would keep hold of the multi-match because it does the best of both worlds, albeit not as bright as the D-match, but it's, it's a great starter lamp, um, which I, I wish I picked up uh, many months ago. Michael Hughes commented on the Bentley Brooklands from last week's vlog. Apologies if you've answered this already uh, or you've given the link before, but what is it you use in the pre-wash stage to detail the vehicle? The detail product is AutoSmart Tireless. Uh, I've been using it now for many years. In fact, it's probably the only tire remover I've used. Uh, and if I can, I'll put a link to it down below. As with everything else I use, if you've not seen the description to the videos below, there should be a little arrow, click that opens up a whole new text window, which will be like a, a roundup of the video um, content, as well as hardware and uh, products that I've used if it's seen in each episode or frequently used items. Paul Watts, what boots are you wearing when washing the vehicle and what pants? They look different to the pants that you were wearing whilst inside the unit. Pants, of course, be in trousers. They are the boots. I've spoken about this before several times. Engelbert Strauss. And again, the trousers. In fact, the whole outfit. Engelbert Strauss and Engelbert Strauss. I first commented about these, I don't know, early into the vlogs. And thank you to those that have actually gone out of the way to A, order some, but then take the time to document it and photograph it and send it to me to say, hey, thanks for the recommendation. Here's the new kit. That's, that, that kind of stuff's really cool and appreciate the time it takes for you to do that. Please look into buying a proper wash gun with quick release fittings for spray nozzles or short ones look at Obsessed's Garage channel. Uh, I do follow Matt's channel, uh, Obsessed Garage. I do have a quick release system. It's a uh, quick release gun, which has the lance, albeit I do need a new Vario lance than the nozzle. So that needs replacement, but other than that, it is a quick release. It's handy for the snow foam attachments. The lance goes in, lance comes out, quick release, fish bosh, bosh. Damn, Jim, another good video. Do more videos of BM E46 M3s. Uh, that comes from TT. On YouTube, I do actually have an E46 cab in carbon carbon black booked in, I think it's late November, December time, for pretty much the white detail, so one to watch out for then, albeit a long way away. Anthony Watt asked, uh, which tyre dressing do we use? And I think I covered that just uh, a short while ago. <laughs> Four days ago, Fardrol. F-A-R-D-R-O-L, thank you for the message. Love the channel, would love it if you could give my dad, Steve, a shout out. I think he's contributed to a large portion of a view count in the last few weeks. Steve, many thanks. Bob and Bob, what do you listen to whilst detailing? So I touched on the new Sony noise cancelling units. This currently is just a random Spotify playlist. I think it's Sweet Soul Sunday. For those on Spotify, you will know about that already. But the music I use on the vlogs is copyright free music, uh, which is mostly sourced on SoundCloud. Marius RS, can't wait to see a <laughs> detailing video on your BMW E91. Not sure that will happen, to be honest, unless someone fancies doing it on my behalf, because I'm just too busy here on customer's cars. But yeah, I like the car, I like the, the E91, the Touring. It's a 320D, 2 litre diesel manual. I do like the idea of an automatic. I quite like the idea of the 1 Series, the 1, 2, 3D. I hear that mapped, they are a fun little car, so that might be. The only restriction I have there is carrying sets of wheels, if I've got a set of wheels or a bumper to tape. Uh, to a shop elsewhere but then there are options of a van locally so uh, perhaps I can look to change in the next coming months really. Turkey CA, uh, this is a message from them. Hi from Turkey, my English very little, I don't understand what you say but I watch in all your vlog. Congratulations, you best. <laughs> You best. Mike EM1, I have those polishing mounts. I love them. Thank you, Mike, thanks for the feedback. This was referenced the polisher holders I spoke about briefly on the Bentley video. Uh, there'll be a link down below if you wanna go check them out again and it's something of interest for your own studio or your own garage. Jose Oliveros, you should launch a store to sell all the stuff you use. There's lots of people saying about having merchandise and t-shirts and hoodies and white details, merchandise. The trouble is I'm that busy with uh, focus going forward with the cars that it's difficult to sort of take on new projects. Uh, but I appreciate your um, thoughts there and support. 
David Bulgren, uh, using the floor jack to be able to rotate the wheels whilst cleaning is genius. David is something that I know a lot of people do and I've been doing it for a while myself. If the wheels aren't coming off the car whilst on the scissor lift, it's just a convenient, handy way to be able to rotate the wheel fully to access every single nook and cranny of the wheel itself. Plus you're gaining access, better access to the caliper behind the spokes. Obviously you just want to make sure you're using the manufacturer. Um, jacking points and actual stands if need be. This one made me smile. Comment from Aset31. How an average female watches YouTube? Beauty gurus, fashion bloggers, and pointless life hacks, and how I watch YouTube. Constantly looking for new white details videos so I can pick up some tips. Hashtag not your average lass. Appreciate the support, thank you very much. Ben Bradbury, this is the last one for the YouTube comments. Enjoyed this video so much that I watched it twice. Love the style and the content, please keep it up. Also, PS, the Samsung S8 Galaxy sound was so much better. So this was on the Black R8 Spider video where I tried to record the whole thing on the Samsung, the smartphone. The footage we're watching at the minute is on the Canon, this is the G7X. I thought the audio might be better on the Samsung, the Canon. It doesn't have an external mic jack point, so unless I, and I knew that when I bought it, but I thought I'd at least get something to get the ball rolling, rather than spend a couple of hundred quid more on a bigger camera with an external mic jack. But the convenience of the point and shoot, it's a much uh, smaller, nicer unit to have, as opposed to a big SLR, which then got the mic jack, but it might be something, if these videos continue, that I have to invest in in the future. Let's have a look at the Instagram comments before I wrap up and run around the Z1 with the video footage. Premiere Detailing, hi there, I've been watching your videos for a while. Uh, what are your top polishes that you use? I think I touched on this earlier on this in this video. I pretty much, there's a small number of polishes I do use. This is one that's coming in from Graham from DDB Detailing up in the North East of the UK. Good friends up there, David and Graham at DDB. They're having an open day, they've just got a brand new unit and I was kindly invited to go up and sort of be part of the, the, the open day and the big reveal. Uh, apologies guys, I will be pushed for time to get up there because I've got commitments here. But off the back of this, there's more opportunity to go up and catch uh, the two of them and other detailers that are dotted around. We've got some good contacts and networks in the industry now. Come up, stay overnight, and we'll go out for a few beers and food. Uh, but I'll catch you at Waxstock this year. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. I will try to be at Waxstock if you're there. I think it's the 23rd of July. Maybe have the camera, maybe not, but it's always good to get involved. So Waxstock detailing show at Rico Arena, Coventry, 23rd of July. Information probably down below. And finally, a couple from on the email. Mitch, hello Mitch. Just want to say thank you for all your videos. I'm starting out, bought my first DA a few months ago and your work is really inspiring. I've learned a lot of little tricks from your videos. It's all really useful stuff. I don't know if I'll ever take the risk of trying to start a business and doing so. It's paid off for you, uh, obviously, which is awesome, but I think there's not enough demand in my location. Anyways, thanks again, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. Um, the, I can't get back to every single message like this. There's a lot come through each day, product, product recommendations and what can I use here and what can you do with that and advice, as well as actually getting back to the inquiries and the quotes I need to send out to potential customers. But Mitch, I wouldn't be put off by location. I'm settled in the in Lincolnshire. There's not a great deal. The biggest, obviously, Lincoln itself is the nearest big city, I think, would be Leeds, uh, which is, I guess, about, I don't know, 80, 90 miles away. Uh, this is a terrible example, the Z1 is actually two miles away, so it's an extremely local car. The Lotus Exige was within 10 miles, so again, actually a local car. On my left shoulder here, you can just about see the next job in. A 1999 Maserati Quattro Porte, this is the second car in this month of May that's been shipped in from overseas, coming in from Europe. So people, if you're doing a good job, people will make the effort, people will travel. Both the Audi R8 Spiders, the Daytona Grey Pearl, and the Phantom Black I've done recently. Both examples, it was a case of the owner driving here, I take them to the local train station, and they spend the afternoon hopping on various trains to make their way back home. So don't be put off by location. The trouble is these days, when I started in 2009, it was sort of new, Valentin was more popular than what the term now is detailing. Of course, the Valet is from way back then. We're all Valet of course, but everyone's a detailer now. So the market is saturated with detailers, and of course, you can spend 100 quid on a full detail or you can spend four grand, five grand on a full detail. It's just dependent on your expectations as the customer and being able to do a lot, do enough research to know what, actually what you're buying. So if you're gonna do it, you need to differentiate yourself and work out is it gonna be a, a, a viable source of income for yourself. At the time of starting, I had very little commitments and it was 
quiet at the best of times. There's a mobile service, as some may remember. So I think long and hard, Mitch. Um, long hours, hard work, very hard work. Perhaps these videos don't portray. Lots of people are saying how easy I make this process look, and it isn't, believe me. And the last email, I'm not gonna mention any names or businesses involved here, because I don't think it's fair. The email subject is Crystal Syrup. Hello Jim, I hope you're well. I'm getting myself a new car next week. I'm going to detail it and protect it. Uh, would it be possible to purchase a bottle of Crystal Serum from yourself? I know it's only for authorized detailers, but obviously being a detailer myself, I'm not going to pay to have my car done by anybody else. Rather than using C1 or CSR, I'd like it to be protected by the to the max as it's my own personal car and crystal serum is the best stuff it wouldn't be used on an client's cars just on my own and again no pictures will be taken as it's just my car yeah you don't get it if you don't ask but unfortunately it doesn't work that way uh, i can't help i'd like to help the community where i can and other detailers hence why i'm giving this information away all the little tips and pointers but selling a bottle of what's otherwise an accredited product which i actually pay for i actually actively pay out each month for the access of this product. I'm not gonna start backhanding it to other people for their own personal use. Apologies, but I think that's fair. So that said, that's me done. I'm gonna get out of here. I need to film the after footage on the BMW. The Lotus was picked up earlier this morning by one very delighted, happy customer. Paul, thank you very much for taking my good friend Rob around for a spin. Rob's actually in the market for an Exige next year himself. So it was a great offer of you to actually uh, take him for a blast as well as my little blast at the start of the video. Good man, thank you very much. Please, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you've not already, go check out Instagram and Facebook. Plenty of daily updates and insights on Instagram scene most days. As I say, Monday next week, today is Saturday. Monday, I start the Maserati Cochaporte. Uh, it's here for the full works, the white detail, five, six day treatments. As always, thanks for the support. See you next time. Cheers.